Good afternoon, everyone. Hope all of you are enjoying day three of AWS reInvent 2016 and having a wonderful week so far. I am Ram Atur, and I am a product manager at AWS. The last two weeks for me have been momentous. Last week, I became a father for the first time. My wife delivered a beautiful and healthy baby girl. And this morning, my team and I delivered a second baby, the AWS Personal Health Dashboard. This is a new service that was launched during the keynote earlier today by Werner Vogels. It is my honor and privilege to introduce you to this new service. The session is full. We may not have sufficient time for question and answers. I'll be here after the session, so please feel free to find me. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have. What to expect from the session? I'll go into details about the various capabilities and features that we launched this morning, along with the value proposition that it offers our customers. I'll spend some time to explain why AWS invested time and effort to build this new service. I'll then go into details about various solution components that interoperate in the backend to provide meaningful information to customers to better manage your infrastructure on AWS. I'll then spend some time about getting started, and I promise I'll spend only a few seconds here given the close to zero setup that is required to begin using this new service. And the demo, that's the exciting part. So we have a few demos lined up. I'll be showing you three different use cases, all inspired by customer use cases. We had several customers participate in the private beta program, and I'm going to show you some of the use cases through demos. And I'll invite Splunk on stage. Randy is here, who's going to walk you through their integration with the service. And I'll come back and explain what else is coming with the new service. This morning, we announced AWS Personal Health Dashboard. This dashboard provides customers a personalized view into the status of your resources, your accounts, and the services that you use on AWS. The information surfaced by this dashboard can be issues that are impacting your resources or potentially impacting the services that you use on AWS. It could be scheduled activities such as changes to the infrastructure powering your resources. Or it could be notifications that are relevant to your AWS account. With this awareness that is specific and contextual to your AWS usage, it makes it very easy for you to quickly find out if there are any AWS issues impacting your applications on AWS. Now, why is all this important? Working with customers closely all these years, we observed that customers spend precious time troubleshooting on their end when there's an impact to their applications. So they have this one question in their mind. Is this application not working because of a bad code on our end? Maybe a bad configuration, a bad deployment? Or is the problem actually because of an underlying AWS infrastructure issue? We consistently heard this feedback from customers who run business-critical and mission-critical applications on AWS. And the usual Amazon way, we heard this feedback. And today, we're delivering the first version of our solution. So the AWS Personal Health Dashboard will provide you proactive notifications when AWS is able to confirm that one of your resources is impacted or a service that you're using is impacted. Providing visibility into issues is good, but surfacing remediation guidance so that you can self-help, get out of the problem is also equally important. So with every issue on the dashboard, we will be surfacing remediation guidance in the form of deep links to specific consoles where you can go and take action on resources that are impacted, as well as deep links to knowledge base articles and AWS documentation that you are familiar with. In my demo, I'll show you what I mean by remediation guidance by walking you through an example. The information is great, but getting this information into the right hands at the right time is extremely crucial to ensure that the right parties are aware 
and that the required action will be taken. For example, we may want all storage-related events or notifications to go to a dedicated storage team, all security notifications to go to probably a centralized security team. So today at launch, we've also integrated the AWS Personal Health Dashboard with CloudWatch events as a push notification channel. This means that customers can set up custom notifications and trigger automated actions so that right parties can be notified and auto-remediation is another thing that is possible. I'll walk you through an example for this as well. This slide shows what the dashboard looks like. I'm gonna spend a lot of time explaining this dashboard, just a few minutes, so please hold tight. Today we launched the console, the personal health dashboard. It's available free of charge for all AWS customers. We also launched a set of APIs, the AWS Health APIs, powering the dashboard. More importantly, the Health APIs will act as the authoritative source to vend health information for all the 70 plus AWS services across all the AWS regions. The APIs will allow customers integration into their uh, third party and monitoring event management systems. The APIs are available for business and enterprise support customers to power their integration. As I mentioned, notifications through CloudWatch events will allow you to set up custom notifications to route information to the right people and set up AWS Lambda functions so that you can trigger automated actions. This feature is available for all customers. We wanted a way to persistently communicate personalized service health when you're on the AWS management console or on any service console. So we integrated with the AWS management console navigation bar where you're going to see a bell that is powered by the AWS health APIs. I'm gonna be demonstrating this very shortly. At launch, we have dozens of resource-specific real-time automatically triggered events, as well as hundreds of service level events. Let me explain why AWS invested in building this new service. As you all know, Amazon Web Services started 10 years back in 2006, and we brought in a decade long of experience running massive scale, reliable, and secure web infrastructure that was powering the AWS Amazon.com retail website. Two years later, in 2008, we launched the AWS Service Health Dashboard. Back then, AWS Cloud was relatively new, and customers could go to this particular website and gather information about service status that they were using. We have come a long way in the last eight years, both AWS and customers. AWS has got 14 different uh, regions today. Uh, the global infrastructure comprises of all these regions, along with 38 availability zones. And AWS has been continuously expanding to support virtually any type of cloud workload, and there are 70 plus services in compute, storage, networking, databases, application services, management, mobile, you name it, we have services in that area. The cloud, as you know, has become the new normal which means that customers of various sizes are all adopting the cloud and looking for new ways to build applications on the cloud and finding ways to migrate existing applications to the cloud as quickly as possible. What this means is that we have a very diverse set of customers who have very different kind of workloads running on AWS today. So you've got customers running petabyte scale analytics applications, you've got customers running financial related applications, You've got customers running SAP deployments. You've got e-commerce applications. You've got all kinds of mission-critical and business-critical workloads. So what this means is that when you go to the AWS Service Health Dashboard, you probably are more interested in learning about how issues are impacting your resources and accounts and services rather than the overall service status. We wanted to provide increased transparency and visibility to your usage, because it is so unique. 
That is why we invested in building the solution, the personal health dashboard, because we felt that the service health dashboard was generic, given the large number of services that we have and the different types of workloads that customers are running. So we are, we've invested a lot in providing visibility over the years, because you can use CloudWatch metrics, you can set up CloudWatch alarms, and that gives you visibility into your virtual resources. And this morning, we also announced uh, AWS X-Ray, through which you can get visibility into your specific application layers. But through AWS Personal Health Dashboard, you get visibility into the underlying AWS infrastructure. So this is a new level of visibility. As I mentioned, it's not just visibility, so we won't let you know that there's an issue. It's not just that. We will also provide you remediation guidance so that you can fix the problem. And the AWS Health APIs, as I mentioned, for easy integration, along with uh, push notifications to CloudWatch events and automated actions powered by AWS Lambda. Let's look at how the service works. Customers can use from the range of 70 plus services to build applications. As you can imagine, it's a complex problem to be able to quickly correlate any issues with the underlying infrastructure to customer resources. We have a bunch of services that's already integrated with us today, which I'm going to explain to you in the next slide. But we take all of this information and take it to a centralized health service. So events generated from various regions across all 70 plus services are aggregated in the health service, and it's replicated in multiple data stores to provide redundancy, and we provide a global view of the information to customers. Along with this, the service also decorates the event with customer metadata to make the information more meaningful. For example, if a resource-specific event is triggered to the AWS health service, we also bring in all the tags that customers have set because we just don't give you the, the volume ID or the instance ID that is impacted, but also the tags that you have set so that it's more contextual and more meaningful so that you can take the right decisions based on that. We expose this information through multiple means. The personal health dashboard is a global console, so you get events across all the regions uh, where you have infrastructure that you're running. And there are APIs, so we, we launched six different APIs today that support multiple use cases. And CloudWatch events where you can set up custom rules and you can set up targets. So the targets will include Amazon SNS, Amazon SQS, AWS Lambda, it could be Amazon Kinesis, or built-in Amazon CloudWatch actions. I'm going to be demoing this so you get a full understanding of how the end-to-end -end works. The programmatic channels can be used by customers to integrate with in-house systems, to automate workflows so that your operational burden is reduced in managing complex applications. So at launch, we have a bunch of services integrated already. I put a few of them on the slide, and I'll walk you through some of the examples, uh, events that these teams are publishing. So with Amazon EC2, all the scheduled change events related to instance retirement or dedicated host schedule changes are available, including issues with instance store degradation because of an underlying uh, disk having a problem. We also have a dedicated set of event types for networking-related issues. So we provide more visibility into intra-availability zone networking issues, inter-AZ issues, as well as AZ to the internet. So this is available for both classic and VPC customers. The Amazon EBS team publishes issues with performance with volumes. And the Amazon RDS service publishes issues with storage as well as dedicated, uh, sorry, uh, scheduled changes with their uh, database instances. The Elastic Load Balancing Service publishes events related to insufficient IPs in the subnet that may, not, that may cause your uh, ELBs not to scale. There are a set of other events they publish as well. The Amazon Elastic Cache service publishes scheduled changes with your Redis and Memcache clusters. The VPN and Amazon Direct Connect publishes scheduled changes with routers and VPN connections. With S Amazon SES, we have events related to DKIM verification, as well as verification of your domain before you can start sending out emails. And we've got Cognito publishing misconfiguration roles when certain Cognito, Cognito features cannot be used because of permission issues. 
And we've got Amazon Elasticsearch, service publishing, uh, scale up required for your domain when there are capacity issues so you can remediate the issue. Along with this, we have all the 70 plus services today integrated to provide service level visibility. So these could be API errors, it could be latencies with the API, it could also be connectivity issues and so on. As I mentioned, this service is global in nature, but we cover events from all regions except the AWS Gov Cloud and the China Beijing region at launch. For every other region, we have a single endpoint where you can hit the endpoint and get events from different regions. The exciting part, getting started. So you need to have an AWS account in order to access the service because it requires authentication. Both the console and the APIs need authentication. And you need to ensure that you have credentials for an IAM user that has the following policy attached. So it grants a specific user access to the health APIs. And that's it, you're all set. With this, let me explain the different ways that you can reach the console, and I'm gonna show you what the console looks like. First, on the AWS Service Health Dashboard, you will find a link to open the Personal Health Dashboard. Clicking that will take you straight to the console. The second is through the AWS website. So the My Account dropdown has a link, as well as the top left-hand menu with other services, we also have a link for Personal Health Dashboard. The third, as I mentioned, is the navigation alert. So as you can see, there is that bell on the navigation bar of the management console, and that widget is powered by the health APIs. Now let's look at the dashboard. This is what the landing page of Personal Health Dashboard looks like. When designing this dashboard, we kept in mind the criticality and timeliness, timeliness of information provided. So the first category provides details about issues that are open, meaning these are events that are impacting your resources and potentially impacting the services that you use. When an issue is closed, it moves away from the open issues section and moves to the event log. The second category are scheduled changes. So these are changes to the infrastructure for the resources that you're using. So you may, these events may seem, uh, may, may be familiar with you because we send out emails for these events today. We heard consistent feedback from customers to provide a different mechanism. Emails are fine, but it's difficult to keep track of them, especially as customers grow their usage on, in a given account, as well as when they adopt multiple accounts. So through this service, we aggregate all of the schedule changes into a single place and provide access to it through the console as well as APIs and the push channels through CloudWatch event. The third category provides details about notifications that are specific to your account. So this could be operational, billing, or security in nature. A few operational uh, event examples could be uh, introduction of 63-bit IDs for instance IDs and volume IDs. So why is this important? It probably is important because you, you may have application logic that is based on the length of the string, so we want to make you aware of it. So it's an important notification to be available on the personal health dashboard. And billing notifications could be end of free tier for a particular service or change in uh, the, a month's bill due to a, some change in tax. Security notifications could be one we had earlier where ELB uh, stopped support for SSL v2 because the security vulnerability was discovered with the SSL v2 protocol itself. All of these are very important notifications that you can route to respective parties. The event log section provides an aggregated view of events across all three categories that I spoke about now, having all the statuses, and it provides a historical view of 90 days. And you'll notice that above each event table, there is a, a, a place to filter. It, APIs and the console support very powerful filtering capabilities. I'll explain this through a use case very shortly. Getting started with the APIs now. 
So all the, the APIs are available in all languages and platforms supported by the AWS SDK. And we have a single global endpoint. And the URL is provided in the, on the screen. It's important to note that this URL is global in nature, which means that if you want to get events for the US West 2 region, for example, you use the same endpoint, but use US West 2 as a parameter to filter the events. So we wanted to provide a global view because we tell you that it is best practice to have multi-AZ, multi-region architecture for your applications. So we didn't want to have, have you go through the trouble of iterating through multiple endpoints and aggregate events yourselves. So we built a single endpoint which you can hit and use a region as a parameter. If you don't provide a parameter, you get events for all regions where you have usage. We also launched Amazon Web Services uh, CLI access today and documentation for both CLI and API can be found on the link. I'll walk you through a demo, uh, three of them. Let's look at a troubleshooting scenario to begin with. So I am a customer of AWS and I'm running a website. It's a three-tier web application, and I notice that my customers are seeing errors on a particular page. And my application system I'm monitoring is alarming, and I have the same question. Is this error because of a code deployment I did last night, or is this a problem due to an underlying AWS infrastructure level issue? So this is the question I have right now. So I'm starting this demo uh, from the management console because customers spend majority of time on the console or on any of the services. So here we wanted to provide a persistent way to communicate personalized service health, and you'll notice that there is this bell with an orange dot, which means that for my account, there is one or more open issue. So I click on it, and these three categories I'm sure are familiar to you now. So it's powered by the health APIs, so you've got issues, you've got schedule changes, and other notifications. So for my troubleshooting scenario, I'm, I'm interested in issues, so I go into open issues, and it takes me straight to the console. And I notice that there's an EBS volume lost that may be impacting my website. So I click on it, and I get more details about this particular issue. So there is text that explains the root cause. There are also relevant links to knowledge base articles as well as uh, AWS documentation. More importantly, we have this affected resources section that lists your exact volume that had an issue. And you'll notice that the volume ID is deep linked, so you can click on this, go to the EBS console, and you can take actions directly on the volume. You'll notice that we're also surfacing tags. I'm gonna talk more about this. So here you can see that it's app, website, and yeah, that's what's causing impact. So once I fix my EBS volume, my website will be back up and running. But that's not it. Since we have built integration with CloudWatch events, it means that you can set up automated actions whenever a particular event occurs. So what I can do is I can click on this particular link, which takes me straight to the CloudWatch events console. I can go to rules, and here you will notice that there is AWS health as a source. So I can select that. I can select EBS as a service for this particular example. I'm going to say it's an issue, which is a category of the event, and I'm going to do EBS volume lost. So I've created a rule which is going to match this particular input. And I can select targets, which can be one of these five. So in this scenario, I want to attach a Lambda function. So what this Lambda function will do is whenever an EBS volume lost event occurs, it is going to trigger this Lambda function, and it's going to detach the volume that had an issue from the instance. It is going to search for the latest snapshot. It will create a new volume and reattach it to the instance. So you, my website would not have even been affected had I done all this beforehand. So through CloudWatch events, we're able to power auto-remediation, where you can set up automated actions based on rules. There's also an edit section where you can really get creative and add multiple types of rules that will match any kind of events that you want to extract. So 
So at this point, I want to state one of the quotes from Werner that I really like. Uh, he said that everything fails all the time. We at Amazon take this very seriously and architect our systems in such a way that they're reliable and redundant. You can look at our strong operational performance as well as the adoption of the cloud over, over the years. But you need to keep in mind the same when you develop your applications as well. So in this case, it's good to have EBS snapshots. If you had a snapshot, you can recover from such issues. It is good to have multi-AZ architecture. And you need to use services such as AWS Trusted Advisor, AWS Config, and others, so that it provides you recommendations of how to pro build applications that are re reliable, secure, and cost-efficient at the same time. I'll walk you through the second scenario, which is, uh, as an application owner, I want to be able to view all events that are specific to my application. Let's see how to do that. For this, I'm going to start off with the event log section where there is a list of all the events for the past 90 days. I'm going to use a filter so that I get rid of all the events that are closed or completed. So I can say status. I can select open or upcoming and apply. So it filters down to only those events that are matching this particular status. And then for my application, I can use tags. So not only do we surface tags when events occur, but we also support filtering by tags both on the console and the API. So I can select tag as a filter, app as the key, and my website is called website for the app. So it further reduces the result to show only those events that are matching my specific application. I can go a step further and add another tag, and I'm going to say stage prod, because prod application is something that I want to cater to first before I see dev or test. So through this, I'll know that these are the events that are matching my specific filters. You'll also notice that on the URL, as I add more and more tags, we update the URL. And this URL is shareable, so you can share it to the teammate, and if they have access to this particular account and the personal health dashboard, they can simply copy paste this URL in the browser, and the same window is going to pop up. So you can use this URL as a reporting mechanism. Let's look at how you can automatically route notifications based on rules. We saw a bit of this with the EBS volume lost. I'll explain how you can use other mechanisms now. For this, I'll start off with the other notifications tab. And let's say that I'm interested in routing all security notifications to a particular security team. And I want to do this across all the accounts that I have. Let's begin with a single account for now. So I go to CloudWatch events again. I can select AWS Health as the um, source. I have security as a service. It's an account notification. And AWS security notification. I can add a target that matches the specific rule, and I can set up an SNS topic. So I, I created one beforehand. It's called my security team. So whenever a particular event matches this rule occurs, it triggers this particular target, and an SNS message is sent to however you have, to the endpoint that you have configured. Now, how do you do this across different accounts that you have? CloudWatch Events is integrated with Amazon CloudFormation, which means that you can create a template and just run it across all accounts so that you can immediately get notifications for different accounts to whatever SNS topics that you configure. So if you looked at all the primitives that we used, we used CloudWatch events, we used Amazon Cloud Formation, we used resource tags that you have set up. With this, we want to help you to continue receiving return on investment because of the adoption of AWS primitives that you have done. So for this launch, Splunk is our exclusive partner with AWS, and I want to invite Randy on stage to explain the uh, cool integrations that they have built. So we can overlay the health information that is provided by the health uh, service with other data that Splunk provides through uh, Config or CloudWatch and so on. 
to have very powerful visualization that will help with quick troubleshooting. So, um, so my name is Randy Young, like uh, Ram said. I'm a product manager for the Splunk app for AWS. And so we chose to integrate the, the uh, AWS Health Dashboard to, um, through the API uh, to help us better uh, inform our customers of, of issues that are happening in their account. Um, so if you don't know what Splunk is, Splunk can collect uh, hundreds of terabytes of data a day. It has multiple ways to collect data through uh, monitoring files. You can connect it to DB Connect, so you can connect, collect uh, structured data. And then you can even, we have a, t a TCP a listener that you can actually forward data to uh, an endpoint, and we can collect it. Uh, the great thing about Splunk is that we can actually, uh, we can enrich the data and do field extractions at index time, but we can also do it through search to create these really uh, rich correlations across multiple data, site, data types. Uh, you also don't need to re-index the data if you want to um, change those correlations. So it's a really flexible tool for that. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, reporting dashboards. So you can send out reports to your executive staff of uh, really high-level dashboards. But then you can also drill into those dashboards to get deeper into the information. So it, it has multiple levels of, of uh, visibility. Also, uh, Splunk can be, uh, can be delivered on-prem. So you can use it with your on-prem environment. Uh, or you can use the AMI in the marketplace to get started in Amazon, so it can also be run in Amazon. And our Splunk Cloud offering is 100% is uh, Amazon-based. So we find that a lot of our customers are really interested in, in doing multiple use cases in, in Amazon um, and collecting multiple different data source types through uh, pull methods and push methods and get near real-time um, uh, observations on their um, accounts. So we, we in the AWS uh, app specialize in uh, IT operations, security, and we actually have a financial modeling system in, in Splunk as well inside of the app, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, we call this uh, giving you the ability to have operational intelligence across all of your environments, whether they're on-prem or cloud. So the Splunk app for AWS has two components. It has a component that's a add-on, which does the data collection. It can collect almost any data source in Amazon. Um, and then we have visualizations in our app for 15 different data sources, including the new personal health uh, information from the API, uh, where we can grab that data through SQS and then display it in a, in a dashboard that I'm gonna show you in a few minutes. We also have the ability, because we collect all this data in Am in, from Amazon, to do cross-data correlations. So we can do things that step through uh, config rules, config, inspector, to give you really deep insights about what's happening in your environment across a bunch of data sources. We also have the ability to collect data for um, a bunch of accounts together, or um, and then also all regions. So in almost all of our dashboards, you can show multiple accounts, multiple regions, all in one pane of glass, so you can manage your entire Amazon ecosystem. Uh, and now I'm gonna show you a demo from the AWS app. Um, mine is not live, mine is a video. Uh, but what it does is it actually is going to show you uh, what would happen if you were an on-call ops uh, engineer and you got a, a page in the middle of the night. So from that page, he goes to his email he looks familiar, by the way. He, he clicks into his, uh, his alert that he's received from Splunk, and then he can click into the link to drill into Splunk and see what's going on. It's telling him that there's a problem with his ERP system. So this is actually a Splunk alert. It has nothing to do with uh, its own application layer. It's not actually on, on the Amazon side. And he's drilling into Splunk, logs in, <clears throat> and now he can see the alert that he has. He sees that on the 25th of November that there is an alert that was fired. Uh, he can see that there's some performance issue that his uh, users of his ERP system are seeing. And then he can drill into that event to actually see the raw log that, that caused that event. And, uh, and what he finds here is that he has latency issues. So the, there's some problem with the system that the, the messages aren't getting through and he has to go a little bit deeper. Since he's a good Amazon uh, user and uh, they follow best practices, he can go to his topology diagram here, which is built by config data and he can turn on all of his instance. Uh, so the way this dashboard works is we collect a config um, uh, snapshot at the beginning and then it incrementally uh, collects all of the snapshots that you have going forward. So you have time series data of your topology. 
since he's a good Amazon user, he has uh, key values with his tags here. He can search for his applications, ERP. And now he sees the infrastructure that's associated specifically with that ERP system. He can see that two of the instances are up and running. So it's probably not those, but he sees one of them is, is off. So he can drill into that instance and see CloudWatch data, all kinds of information about that instance, and even grab the instance ID so that he can then go check a little bit deeper into uh, what's going on. So from there, he clicks into the timeline. What he can do in the timeline is he can actually um, search for that specific instance, and then he can look at CloudWatch, um, config, inspector, and config rules data um, across all of the time that was uh, correlated. So here you can see that he has a timeline. So he has a time series events of, of the uh, actions that were taken on that instance. And from inside here, he can actually roll over to November 25th and see that there is no actions that were taken by anybody. So no, no cloud trail, no IM activity happened to turn that instance off. So from there, he sees the last event was on the 22nd, was actually starting up the RP system. So he clicks through just making sure that there's no, nothing that happened along the way that he, he didn't expect. And then from there, he's, he's kind of stuck and has no idea what's going on because nobody shut the machine off, so there must be some other, some other reason. So he can go up into um, the pull down and actually grab the personal health dashboard that we have, or the, um, sorry, the personal, personal health panel that we have here, which shows all of your uh, different instances that are happening, whether it's uh, been resolved or it's an error or a warning, similar to what Ram was talking about, the different severities. And then you can see over time the different events that have popped in. From there, you can see that at EC2, it looks like today there's actually a warning that's happening. So you can uh, hover over that warning and see that there uh, is, is maintenance that's happening right now on that instance. So from there, you can drill in and see he finds his instance that he was looking for. He can see that there is a power maintenance that's happening. So it gives him uh, very good visibility into what's actually happening and why that there's a degraded experience at the moment. So now he knows what's, what's going on. He can see that the, all the knowledge base information is there as well. And then he can go back to the dashboard and when this maintenance is completed through the magic of video, you can see that now that instance is healthy and his incident is over. He can then shut off his machine and go back to sleep. Everything is better for, for the customer now. So one thing with this is it really helps with your uh, debugging things and figuring out what's going on. But what you could do with this is since they, they already have the Amazon environment all set up with alerts, they could proactively have alerted when that message came through and then actually uh, put it into their ticketing system or notified the person that owns the ERP as, a, as an application owner that there was going to be maintenance done, uh, whether it be emergency maintenance or, or scheduled maintenance. So it gives you the ability to um, avoid having those, uh, you know, having to dig deep to find out those issues. But also, uh, we have the ability to collect a bunch of sub-accounts, and so you can see an entire environment. If you're running a multi-account um, environment, you can see across all of those accounts and all of the um, uh, all of the messages that you're receiving there. So if you want to try this out, we have a, a new uh, 20 gig uh, license uh, for or a 20 gig. Um, light license on the Amazon Marketplace for six months. You can actually try the app out. It's, um, it's free. And uh, we have the health monitor in there so you can um, try the integration. If you also would like to stop by our booth 206, we can uh, give you a live demo uh, right after this event. Uh, so my legal department tells me that I must tell you that uh, what I'm going to show you after this is uh, future looking things and they may not actually make it into the uh, Splunk app for AWS, but it's ways that we want to integrate with uh, personal health going forward. So we want to we want to look to uh, add things to our topology, to our timeline features, so that you have real time series data and you have an audit trail of what's happened in your account. So this is what our topology, the topology that I showed you in the video, you can see the little blue icons there. You'd be able to drill into those little blue icons and actually see what the health um, events that have happened in that specific instance. This will give you the ability to visually find where the instances are, see all of the impact of the other instances that are around it, and make sure that you can identify that, um, you know, what, what the impact is overall. Also, we see value in adding this into our, topo or into our timeline feature. So that you actually have a time, uh, 
you have an audit trail of what's happened in your environment. Um, since Splunk has the ability to set different timing for things, if you have to have a year for compliance reasons of, uh, of data stored, you can actually set the index for this to a year and you can have time series data uh, going back for, for a long time. Also, uh, in, in the personal health panel, we can see that we would like to do things like contextual drill down or even use the hyperlinks inside of those messages to help you get to uh, more knowledge-based uh, information to, to uh, solve your problems. Also, um, we could see that uh, creating up some standard alerting. Uh, we, we have alerting that we use internally for these types of messages, even config rules and inspector messages, very similar to this, uh, to kick off our remediation processes. So I, I'm, I'm sure that we'll add um, integrations there in the future. And from that, I'll give it back to Ram to tell you what's coming next for the health. Thank you, Randy. What else is coming in the next few months with AWS Health Service and the AWS Personal Health Dashboard? As I mentioned, with 70 plus services in multiple regions, it's a complex problem to quickly correlate impact with underlying infrastructure with customer resources. So we will invest with service teams to quickly correlate and provide proactive, real-time, resource-specific events going forward. We already have several of them live today, and we'll add more and more in the coming months. I showed you how you can set up AWS Lambda to fire off automated notifications to the CloudWatch events channel. In the next few months, we will work to provide templates of functions that you can readily attach and take actions. So you could think of these as blueprints for Lambda, where we are going to provide tested scripts that can be used to remediate any issue that is recurring in nature. Splunk has been an amazing partner with us. We will continue to closely work with them, and we look forward to investing in other partner integrations as well in the next few months. With this, we are very excited to see the different integrations that you will come up with, the creative ways you're going to use the APIs and the dashboard to solve your use cases, and we are very keen to hear your feedback. With that, I'd, I'd like to thank you very much for coming to the AWS reInvent and, and this particular session. And please don't forget to uh, fill the evaluations. Thank you very much.